how do you think the European left can actually address the crisis that is ongoing at the moment? My um, experience of the last year and a half during the, the um, acceleration of this crisis is that the worst enemy of reason and progress are the social democratic parties. I say this painfully, there's no glee in uh, this uh, statement. I talk to all sorts of different people, from bankers to trade unionists to uh, labor parties, social democratic parties, conservative parties. Uh, I think this is a time when we really need to engage with everyone. And I find that what I have to say, um, things similar to what we've been saying here today, uh, is received extremely positively by working people, by people on the left who are not connected to government or to parties that are on the verge of gaining government, but also, interestingly, by industrialists, some some people in the financial markets who are not connected to bankrupt banks, because those who are connected with bankrupt banks have a party line, a very Stalinist party line of their own, uh, and some right-wing commentators, even people in the IMF, who would have, you know, if they were here and the camera was switched off, they would probably agree with us. So this this is this is what's so interesting about this crisis. But it's so acute that you have people from all walks of political life um, agreeing on some basic fundamental uh, interpretations of what's going on and what ought to happen. But my great sorrow, because I come from the social democracy, I mean, kicking and screaming, I was part of the social democratic tradition with the Socialist Party because it was quite a radical party in the early days. I find that this party, which was the party that uh, I grew up in, has become the worst um, agent of evil in the Eurozone. This is Pasok. This is Pasok. And, you know, I was an advisor to the Greek Prime Minister until 2006. He wasn't the Prime Minister then. That's why I was advised to when he was just leader of Pasok. So uh, went wrong since then? <laughs> well, it turned, no, nothing went wrong since then. I, I just discovered that I was doing the wrong thing. I was wrong. In the sense that I was investing too much, uh, too many expectations into a political party that was the epitome of double speak. One narrative to its members, another narrative to the powers that be. And of course when it gets into government, it's its narrative with the powers that be that overtakes. And because these parties have a lot to prove to the powers that be, you know, they have to, sh to show special allegiance that the Tories don't have to do. They tend to be more of a yes man than uh, the Conservatives are. So you have the Greek Socialist Party at the moment is responsible single-handedly for bringing the Eurozone down. Yeah, this is an extreme statement, I know, but I'm, I'm making a pointed statement in order to jolt some consciences here. Uh, what do I mean by this? It's true that when they won government in 2009, Already the ship was sailing straight to the iceberg and there was perhaps very little that could be done to avert the meltdown. But when you are in government as a socialist and you recognize that this is what's going on and you do recognize too, too that the Eurozone as a whole has an architecture that cannot sustain this crisis and that your ships hitting the, 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 the iceberg is going to, to start a chain reaction that will effectively take, take us to a new postmodern 1930s with the extreme right dominating. 
you have a moral, political duty to speak up. You can't turn the wheel and avert the iceberg. At least speak up. So my advice to the Greek Prime Minister has always been, and I've been in talking to, to some high-ranking people, including the Prime Minister, uh, at least in the first stages, you can't do anything in terms of fiscal policy, monetary policy. You just These levers you, are non-existent for a small country like this. But what you can do is you can have a press conference and use the only thing that is left to a left-winger in government in a Eurozone state. No. Your capacity to speak the truth. Uh, don't threaten. Don't bluff. Just speak the truth. Say that in our estimation, austerity is not going to work. We may have to, to be forced to, to take it on if this is the only way of paying pensions uh, because we need a loan and the Germans will only give us a loan if we undertake austerity. But why bring out all these false, fake predictions and forecasts of... So, to cut my, the length of my response to you, I, I think we're in a situation where the social democratic parties unfortunately are repeating the huge errors of social democracy in the 1920s and 30s. We are splitting uh, the working class. We are, or oh, at least they, I don't want to cut myself as part of, the, of, of social democracy anymore. Uh, they are executing faithfully their uh, marching orders from what I call bankruptocracy uh, when in government. When they fall, get out of government, like Gordon Brown did recently, uh, they may write nice uh, editorial pieces um, in the Financial Times saying all the right things, which of course they never said when they were in government. Then when they have a chance of uh, reclaiming government, then they fudge and they adopt half-baked policies which again are uh, nothing more than a manifestation of this double speak, trying to appeal both to the electorate that want to hear some rational uh, ideas as to how the crisis can, can be ended, while at the same time trying to appeal to the, bank to the bankrupt bankers and to the powers that be in Europe. So the great conundrum that we are all facing in Greece and Britain, everywhere, is what to do when you've got dominant social democratic parties, which are the focal point that for the working class, for progressives, that, and yet parties that are unreformable. We in the left have a very uh, bad track record of operating outside those parties, because we tend to splinter and divide and multiply, uh, while we are utterly incapable of reforming those large parties of the centre-left when we are in it, in them. And I speak with, from experience, I've been in one of those parties, I've, I've tried to, you know, I even convinced myself that it would be fruitful to try to change it from within, to, you know, in, engage in dialogue, and then you realise at some point that the only people who rise to the top are the ones who are not interested in ideas, and they are not interested in changing the world, they are interested in changing themselves and to adapt th themselves to the existing world. So I don't have an answer to your question, but I do hope that this crisis is going to destroy the status quo. You've commented on the parallels of the 1920s and the 30s, and we know that that particular period in time ended terrifically. Um, without being melodramatic, how do we take you know, uh, the organised left and what I believe to be a huge potential unorganised left mm -hmm. and knit it together? What are the themes that can knit it together? to avert something similar happening? I don't know. I know that this is uh, the task. It's what needs to be done. In the recent demonstrations in the center line square in Athens, I saw that happen to a very large extent. But it was led by the unorganized. It was not led by the organized. Uh, I 
hope that it will restart now that the heat has gone and the autumn is uh, with us again in the streets of Athens. I hope that it happens everywhere. Uh, but as Lenin said, things get to get re- have to get really shitty before they start getting better. And in this country, in Britain, uh, you've been sheltered by not being a member of the Eurozone. The flexibility of the pound has created a little shock absorber, which has not averted the crisis, but it has uh, delayed it. It will come, and when it comes, it's extremely important that uh, those who are not part and parcel of the organized political parties uh, lead those of us who have been part of the organized political parties into a new coalition whose purpose should be to combine uh, all sorts of different freedoms that have been steamrolled steamrolled over by neoliberalism, by the logic of of capital, and the awful alliance between uh, representatives of the working class and uh, the powers that be.